Hello, my name is Krista Jones, founder and CEO of Virginia Leadership Institute, and welcome to A Seat at the Table. The purpose of this show is really to bring together people who are making an impact in their community day after day and help them inspire and motivate <coughs> others to do the same and to really have their voice represented at the table. Today we have with us the, some of the founding members of the African American Leadership Council of Arlington. Um, and part of their mission is to do just that, is to make sure that African American voices are represented at the table. So we have with us today um, Attorney Sarah Somerville, Dr. Alfred O. Taylor, and the Honorable Frank Wilson. Welcome to A Seat at the Table. Thank you. Thank you very much. So before we get started talking about the African American <coughs> Leadership Council of Arlington, because we have so much wisdom and so much experience right here on the stage with us today, I'd like for each of you to talk about where, how you've been involved in the community and just a little bit about your background. So we'll start off with uh, Mr. Wilson. I'm very pleased to talk about what has happened over the years in Arlington County. My wife and I came here in 1962 and I became very active in many aspects of county life. And I've been proud of most of these. I have three young folks that are graduated from the Arlington Public School System. And then I served for 25 years, almost 25 years, as a member of the Arlington School Board. And I have some, some good memories. I, I stepped down at the end of 2008, and I had some extremely good memories of the things that I've seen happen in Arlington Public School System, as well as Arlington County. Excellent. Thank you very much. Dr. Taylor? Okay, I was actually born in Arlington County in 1934. And as a kid, grew up <coughs> and uh, in here in Arlington, I did not attend public schools in Arlington. I attended the D.C. public schools at that time. But I, although I attended the D.C. public schools and moved to D.C. right out, out of high school, I always contributed and uh, spent my time in Arlington working in the community as Boy Scout leader, basketball, baseball coach. And after uh, retiring, I moved back to the community in 1990. And since then, I've served in many capacities as the, the president of the NAACP, the two terms as the president of the North Civic Association, substitute teacher at Drew Elementary School. So my whole involvement had been within Arlington, uh, although for a short period. I lived in D.C., but I still, all my activities were in Arlington. Excellent. And Sarah, tell us about how you've been involved in the Arlington community. Well, I moved to Arlington in 1993. Uh, I'd been, I moved here from Birmingham, Alabama, where I'd been very active running campaigns and so forth. And uh, I was the state director for Bill Clinton's campaign in the state of Alabama. And after we won that election, I moved to D.C. with the uh, campaign with the Clinton administration and uh, rented an apartment here in Arlington. Mm -hmm. And so I've been in Arlington now since 1993. And I've been very active in Arlington community since I moved here, organizing the No Arlington Stadium against uh, baseball in Arlington, and just been very actively civic engaged and involved the whole while I've been here. Excellent. Ran for county board Excellent. before. So Wonderful. Forth. Wonderful. Well, like I said, you know, you all really have a wealth of experience, and I think it, this is going to be an instructive show to really help others learn how to make a difference and how to make an impact, because you're definitely doing it through the council. You know, we see so many organizations today that only last a few years, mm -hmm. can't get started, have mm -hmm. problems with leadership. Talk about how and when the African American Leadership Council of Arlington got started. Well, the African American Leadership Council was really started in 2007 to provide a forum 
for information sharing uh, in those predominantly African American <coughs> communities of Arlington to act as a common self interest to network with other organizations such as the black churches and in our founding we had the pastors of the seven African American churches as part of our founding group also the black chamber of commerce and others uh, at that meeting we decided not to to hold a monthly breakfast meeting mm -hmm. where we would just talk and discuss issues or uh, talk in general to see could we identify issues that were having an impact on uh, the African American communities and develop strategies that we felt could help us uh, address some of these issues. Most of the things we decided we wanted, did not want to be political. Mm -hmm. We did not want to support any self-interest groups unless they were in concert with the mission mm -hmm. that we had uh, set out to for the thing. And the main thing that we wanted to develop is relationships, collaborations with people that we would be assured that we had someone at the table when the decisions were, that impact were being formulated, mm -hmm. that we had, although we may not have been at the table in person, we would have a representative who could express our viewpoints Definitely. at the table. Definitely. Do you, you want to add anything else to why and how you got started? I think he identified it pretty good. However, when I look back, I think one thing that we all were concerned about who were very active in community engagement is what can we do to reach out mm -hmm. to our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And through this organization, we've been able to do at least a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You know, I've been involved with a lot of organizations, and one of the things I really like about the African American Leadership Council of Arlington is the strong networking base. Just like Dr. Taylor, you mentioned the monthly breakfast meetings. You know, I think a lot of our organizations, we always have a task, we're always focused on doing something. And while there are important issues that come up at your meetings, you know, I love it that we're, sometimes we're just able to connect with people. We may be able to build a bridge on another issue that we're all working on together. So I think that's a valuable resource that um, is a great model for organizations. So how do you all select members? How can you become a part of the AALCA? Well, we look for people who've been involved in their, in their communities, mm -hmm. uh, civic activism, people mm -hmm. who are already involved in the community, and obviously people who are in line or in concert with what our mission is. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is how we recruit and we go out and ask individuals to become part of our organization. Uh, through membership recruiting, mm -hmm and people who are already active in the community. And could you all talk a little bit more about the black churches? I know that's a very instrumental part of the organization. Um, can you talk about how they've been involved and why they were such an important part of the beginning? Well, we have sponsored several events, forums, candidates forums, and the black churches have been uh, a partner with us throughout all of these events that we have formed. Uh, they, um, like last year in 2014, in May of 2014, we held a candidates forum <clears throat> for all of the candidates running in the 8th Congressional District. And we used uh, Mount Zion Baptist Church for that forum. And they partnered with us throughout the whole event. Excellent. And this year we have a forum on May 7th. 2015, and that forum will be held at the Mount Olive Baptist Church on May 7th, 6.30, with the actual forum beginning at 7, but doors will open at 6.30 for the candidates to be there, hand out their literature, to meet and greet the voters, and then we will start the candidates forum, which is a debate, at 7. Now, first I'd like to say Kicking off the forum will be the school board candidates. There are two school board candidates, and they will have three minutes each to make their statements. And they will not be part of a Q&A panel. 
And right after the school board candidates speak, we will have the six declared county board candidates. Excellent. Um, we uh, have a panel format for them. We will ask questions. The membership, uh, members of this, this organization have submitted questions, and then these are our base questions, and then we will select questions from the audience as well. And each candidate will have a certain amount of time to respond to each question, and we'll have different category of questions. And the forum will go on until about 8.30, um, so that's on May 7th. In addition to the Black Ministers partnering, partnering with us, the Black Chamber of Commerce has been a partner, especially the Northern Virginia Black Chamber of Commerce has been a partner with us from day one. Mm -hmm. And they will uh, sponsor a lot of the upfront cost for putting on these forums. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You mentioned the importance of the churches mm -hmm. within the African American leadership. <clears throat> The pastors of the churches, most of the members of the Arlington community, uh, the African Americans would be members of one of the seven churches. Mm -hmm. So having those pastors as part of this, we get the feel of uh, the issues of how it's affecting their membership to help us identify issues or things, not just for political things, but things that the county or the county board are proposing to do right. that will impact the quality of life for the members of these churches. So the ministers play a great, great role in here because they really have the audience that we are trying to represent. Excellent. Can you talk about why it has been so important from the beginning to not be a political organization? Um, you all have been involved in politics in your own way as individuals, but can, like you said, any candidate can come if they want to come talk about what they'd like. But why has that been so important? I think uh, independence uh, is a strong character right now in the political era we're in for the last 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. And we will support a candidate that's in line with our, our thoughts and our mission and what we want to do. And we will support any candidate, no matter whether they are Republican or Democrat. And that's what we mean by being nonpartisan. We want that freedom of that independence to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. We also want the, our uh, constituency, I'll call it that, the resident. We want them, when, it, when they do have the opportunity, to be more in tune to the issues rather than voting along party lines. Excellent. So we want to educate them to, to look at the candidate, how they address the issues that's affecting your quality of life, Excellent. not just because you're the most popular party in right. town, and right. thing, but get to the point that you actually look at what the candidate is bringing to the table. Wonderful. And, and I'd just like to add to that. I look at the African American Leadership Group as being the eyes and the ears of Arkham County. Excellent. And even though that we don't take sides with issues, but we'd like to know what the issues are, if there's anything that we can do to improve the situation. Excellent. And that goes from jobs to education on down the line. Well, on that point, so what are some of the major issues that are facing Arlingtonians right now? Well, one I like to complain about all the time <laughs> is, um, and you know, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing, is uh, the high real estate assessments. Mm -hmm. Every single year, the mortgage goes up because of Arlington's real estate assessments. And even in a year where the assessment did not increase, the tax rate did. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you are just constantly um, increasing what you have to pay every month, the cost of living uh, in Arlington, mm -hmm. you know, just keeps climbing. So we need the, the homeowners, people who pay rent, uh, and people who pay taxes, period, uh, see an increase every year. We got to get our arms around that. We cannot constantly, this is unsustainable. We cannot constantly every year 
have a heavier tax burden on our citizens. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to decide how the money is being spent, how are we going to spend the budget, there needs to more be there needs to be more community involvement in that process. Mm -hmm because we're paying the bills, mm -hmm. but you're deciding how to spend the money. Mm -hmm. So the county officials, the county staff, as well as the county board members, should listen more to the community about our priorities. And I think that had a lot to do with last year's election with the Columbia Pike streetcar project being pulled. Mm -hmm. Because um, so I think I think the cost of living in Arlington would increase assessment values, which I don't know if we can control or not, but I do know we can control that tax rate. Right. So you know, I think if there were an Arlington County Board member here, they would say, "Well, this we have the Arlington way. We have the system where you know the cons our constituents communicate with us. We have civic associations, the civic federation. You know, what else?" do we need to be doing proactively as a community to make sure that those bridges are, are made? Let me just build on something that Sarah said there in terms of the money. One thing that we pride ourselves in Arlington County is having one of the better school systems in the entire country. Now that school system does not come cheap mm -hmm. and unfortunately it has impacted us in terms of, of higher taxes and all of the other things that Sarah indicated there. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's sort of a half dozen in one hand and six in the other one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that it still needs to find creative ways of increasing the tax base. Okay. Uh, one of the reasons, as you all know, we're getting hit hard now because of the law and the commercial uh, occupancies mm -hmm. are down. Right. But, you know, although we value our houses raising in value, that's good if you're planning on selling your house and leaving, but what it's doing is having a negative effect on those of our seniors who are remain, wanting to remain in the county mm -hmm. with the way our taxes keep going up each year. You are really impacting a lot, I know, in my community, a lot of the seniors who have put in many years who want to stay here. Mm -hmm. But then we keep increasing the tax base. So therefore it's forcing us to have a brain drain because our youngsters who are graduating out of college who could come back in and help the community are moving outside because uh, can't they can't afford to uh, come yeah. back in. So it's a Really, a, a, it's a problem, I understand. I'm an advocate for having the top school system, but then where does the line come when it comes on the homeowner right. who really wants to stay there past their prime earning time, <laughs> and earning years, and just want to remain and live out their life comfortably and enjoy a good quality of life, but really being impacted by the taxes keep escalating each year. So these are really important issues that, you know, communities across the nation are facing. But like I asked earlier, how do we help the county leadership come to, come to the right solution? How do we make sure that our voices are being heard when they're around the table talking about these same exact problems? You know, the, uh, it has been raised. I'm not advocating it. It has been raised before. Our at-large system is not mm. the best way okay. to have the individuals uh, from different segments and things mm -hmm. heard, because some communities are uh, greatly underrepresented at the table. Mm -hmm. They are represented being at-large, never get a touch to talk to them. So I, I'm not advocating it, but we need to look at a way that the representatives would have more involvement with their constituency. And I agree. I agree with Dr. Taylor. Uh, you know, looking at districts, mm -hmm. looking at uh, council, um, county board districts as a way of electing our county officials may be the answer to some of the Arlington way mm -hmm. of how do you involve the community, maybe in smaller groups by districts. Mm -hmm. 
So for this, for these particular issues that we're talking about, say there's people watching this right now that totally agree that you know they're really concerned about the rising tax rates, they're really concerned about the the commercial vacancies, they're really concerned about us, you know, compromising the quality of these uh, of our schools. What is the first thing you would suggest that they do if they are concerned about these issues just like we are? How do we? What's the first thing we should do? I think that we need to become more active. First of all, we need to become more active. <coughs> And these uh, committees and things, the committees need to be out searching more rather than just meeting and having to try to get a real feel of it so that we can really come back and get feedback to what's out there because, you know, people get a little disillusioned in Arlington Way until lately mm -hmm. when every vote comes out five to nothing, mm -hmm. you know, and you have a great percentage of the people not agreeing with the outcome or the spending. They don't feel that they are really being um, heard. Mm -hmm. So a different way of dividing up the county so that you would have a representative who you could hold accountable for representing your district, area, territory, what exactly. would be more, I think. Okay, so it's a very it's a great concept. You know, I hope that this council or other people that are watching this can really start to put some more thought into a, a districted system, so we can get more representation at the individual level in Arlington. So, for the council, where what issues and how do you see the future of the council? What do you see kind of coming down the pike? What are some of the strategies that you're thinking about for addressing some of the issues of the future? Well, one of the things that once an issue is identified, then we start to strategize. Mm -hmm. So we just try to remain flexible mm -hmm. and not get focused on what's coming down the pike. And that's why we try to meet monthly to talk about the issues, to try to be in front of the issues, but uh, not, not really organizing to right. face each other. And I, and I don't think we have identified future issues. The issues uh, that we will address are the issues that are raised mm -hmm. at that point in time. Okay. We don't have a future outlook for, for issues that will surface, that we will attach on to and strategize and, you know, implement strategies to deal with that issue. So, there's not a set priority on on what those issues are, and and another, and one of the ways your earlier question you asked how could people get involved, mm -hmm. well you get involved through your communities. Uh, every neighborhood in Arlington has a civic association, mm -hmm. and that is how you get started if you're not active in anything, because we recruit from people who are active in the community. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get involved, we may find you down the road as somebody we want to recruit and ask to come into our organization. It's going to be based on your civic involvement. Excellent. And it's really good, and I know from knowing each of you personally that you're definitely authentic, and I know that you are very involved in your communities. And it's great to say that because um, as founder of Virginia Leadership Institute, we try to train African Americans to run for office and get appointed positions. And in previous shows, that's exactly what the guests have said, you know, just find a way to get involved. Just take that first step, join that civic association, because that is the only way that your voice is going to be heard. You're not, you know, being an armchair activist is not going to get you anywhere. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Or oh, Monday morning quarterback. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> to complain afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we've talked a lot about the issues going on nationally, the issues in Arlington, the great work of this organization. What do you really want the legacy of the African American Leadership Council of Arlington to be? I'd, I would hope that they would say that we made a difference in terms of our approach to resolving issues okay. and the information that we were able to pass on to others. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I would uh, piggyback on and say that the legacy that here is a group you could come to to uh, get really true answers uh, for the issues that are, or how to improve or how to work uh, through some of the problems or the issues that's facing 
the community, and that community is anybody. Mm -hmm. Anybody, not not just uh, for the African American community, but we would want to be recognized as that group. That if there's an issue that's affecting the quality of life, doing uh, of any Alectonian, that they know that we would be working to strategize to find answers to resolve the problem. Excellent. And that we helped to make room at the table. Mm -hmm for anybody who wants to be at the table. So our legacy would be uh, we provided seats at the table, um, uh, upgrade in the quality of life to have a good quality of life in Arlington uh, so that you can afford the cost to live in Arlington. Excellent. And so, you know, anyone that's involved with organizations knows that it's not easy. You know, when you're trying to, these are challenging issues that we've discussed here today. What are some of the specific challenges that you feel the council has faced or, or may face in the future in trying to get more people a seat at the table? I, I guess it's uh, the commitment, the commitment mm -hmm. of people to stick to it, this, and stick to those things. And not just when your issue have been resolved, then you go. You have yes. to be committed to the whole. And we, I think all of us have said that we are committed to improving the lives of all Arlingtonians. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about issues, it's those who affect the quality of life for anyone. And if I pull up your quality of life, you pull up someone else's quality of life. And we are always making shooting for Arlington to be that ideal community that other communities look at. Wonderful. To go. Yeah. Wonderful. Anything any other anything else to add? Okay. Okay. So well, I would like to thank you all for joining us at the seat at the table. I'm the Honorable Frank Wilson, Dr. Alfred O. Taylor, and Attorney Sarah Somerville. This has been a great discussion. And I think, um, like I said earlier, we really want this show to be a model for either people who want to get more involved or people who want to start organizations, their own community about getting more involved and helping others have that seat at the table. I think we've talked about some issues that are pressing, you know, at the national level, at the local level to all people, not just African Americans. And I think that's one um, thing to really take away from this show is that a lot of times we like to segment our communities and say, oh, they're only concerned about this or that. But these are all issues that affect our quality of life, like you all said. So just a reminder that, you know, one of the great events that the African American Leadership Council of Arlington uh, prides itself on is their candidates forum. And they've been doing candidates forums since they were started. And on Thursday, May 7th um, at 6.30 p.m. at the Mount Olive Baptist Church in Arlington, they will be having a candidates forum. It'll start off with some words from some of the school board candidates who are running this year. And then it'll move into a discussion with the county board candidates who are seeking to get the Democratic nomination. And this will be moderated by Pastor Leonard Hamlin from Macedonia Baptist Church. So thank you all again for joining us at a seat at the table. This has been a great conversation. And join us next time to talk more with different leaders in your community who are helping you get a seat at the table.